Hello, back. because we're constantly swaying back and forth. We get bumps and jolts continuously. Um, we are a real narrow gauge. Obviously our narrow gauge is three feet wide, 36 inches, as opposed to a standard gauge rail. And that the gauge is the difference between the rails and that is four feet, eight and a half inches. So almost two foot difference. We are one of the only narrow gauges left in the United States. There's us and one in Colorado. There's also Dollywood, but I wouldn't count that really. <laughs> and maybe there's like a little loop in Disneyland, but as far as like real authentic railroads that served a purpose once upon a time or still do, we're one of two in the United States. And we're also one of the top 10 scenic railways in the entire world. Has anyone ever ridden on this train before? Sweet, and what about the luxury car? Not the luxury. And I can tell you whatever I want. Right. Okay, so back to safety with the narrow gauge, we'll constantly be rocking back and forth. Um, so we say try to always have three points of contact. Your hand on a window sill or a seat or a table or whatever, someone's face, whatever you need to keep your balance. But try to keep a steady stance if you're just standing there. Um, out there on the platform, we have a railing, so try to hold on to the railing. Um, you have to duck and step over the door when you go through it. If you're tall, you have to duck, but if not, then you just have to step. And also be very mindful of your feet. So because we're constantly moving, people aren't going to walk in a really like straight, like line. They'll kind of walk, like wobbled, like you're drunk. So when you drink, the straighter you walk. Um, but just be mindful of your feet. Just try to have them like out of the way um, and be cautious so that when people walk, need to walk through, they can. And also, with that being said, um, that door is pretty heavy, so we don't lock it. So don't ever flip the switch because that will actually lock it. It's a sliding door, so you give a good tug on it and then it'll open. 
you think that would be pretty self-explanatory, but that's usually the biggest struggle is the door. And don't use the door frames as a point of contact. This one especially. Um, if you put your hand in that door frame, the wind can slam that door so fast and hard. And this, this one as well, or somebody else could. So don't don't just leave your hand in the door frame. If you are in the door frame holding it, make sure your body is blocking any door from hitting your fingers. That's about it for safety. Um, no crossing from car to car, but usually the luxury guests don't want to go into general boarding, so I think we're okay there. Uh, there is, on this platform, there's just a little space off to the right hand side, but there is a bridge that connects the two cars. That is a big tripping hazard. It's constantly moving, so watch your toes around that. But usually everybody loves this platform. We, in the luxury car, are very privileged in here. Number one, we have the biggest platform and we have a speaker out on our platform. All the other train cars, there's no speaker out there and it's a smaller platform. And we have little benches as well. So you can never get away from me is what that essentially means. You can always hear me. And what else was I going to say? Oh, as we go up and back down, we don't have any cars behind us. So they save this view for the luxury car as well. Um, a whole wide open view, the railroad tracks, the mountains. It is absolutely beautiful and stunning, especially now that the sun came out. And the rest of the train, there's one tour guide for the 13 train cars. And in here, there's one tour guide for 13 people. So if you have questions, let me know because I can alter my tours so many different ways so that it appeals to you as an individual tour. Um, so let me know if you have questions and we can go that route or you can just listen to what I decide to tell you, whatever you want. Okay, let's talk about the food and actually let's talk about your excursion. We're not supposed to start the drinks till later, so that's why I'm stalling. But if you open up your All Aboard magazine, you can take these home if you want, whatever you want. There's a rail map. You can follow along. We will start at milepost zero, Skagway, Alaska. We will head up to the White Pass Summit. This is milepost 20.4. And this is the border between the United States and Canada. Oh, I'm sorry, thanks. So we used to just barely go into Canada and turn around and come back, but now we built this loop this last year. So we actually are going quite a ways into Canada. So now you must have your actual passport on you. Our tickets Your tickets passport. say no passport? Yeah. yeah. we don't get off the train. I just like to scare everyone because it is it is a big deal because a lot of the buses do come into Canada and they must have their passports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just like to play off of that fear har, har, and watch the fear in all your faces and then have a little inside laugh and then move on. So I'm a little bit sorry. <laughs> Some people are like, oh. and it's usually while we're moving and there's no way to go back and get it. It's the best. Unfortunately for me this morning, the whole group had their passports and they're like, oh, it's okay, we've got it. I was like, oh, fine. But, um, so anyways, we will cross the border and go into Canada just a little ways. And we'll do a loop and then we'll come back down the same track. So you will get both sides of the train tracks today. One on the way up, the other on the way back down. And as we ride along, I'll be pointing out some of these really pretty sights and the views, good picture opportunities constantly. Um, I also will be sharing with you the incredible history of the Klondike Gold Rush, the history of the men who constructed and risked their lives building this railroad. And I also did a lot of research on the women of the Gold Rush. So some really cool stories that I saved till the end for that. But you guys are lucky. Um, just 
had a spoiler alert, there was never any gold found in Skagway, but we're known as the gateway to the Klondike. And that's because it was the furthest that you could sail before you had to come up here and start this extremely difficult, arduous journey up and over the mountain passes and eventually over 600 miles away to Dawson City where the gold was. Um, so the Klondike Gold Rush is what judge how many times you come up here. Um, but people usually like to get a little bit, go back down, sit and munch, come back later on. I mean, we're on here for quite a while. So just so you know, it's not like a one time whatever. And if I clear your plate, it's just more for cleanliness and for the dishes not breaking and rattling and falling off. So don't be offended. You can always get another plate. Um, if you are uncomfortable with the motion of the train and you don't want to fix your own plate, let me know and I would be more than happy to fix you a plate. But it will cost you a goat cheese ball. So, <laughs> fair warning. Fair warning. For extra goat cheese ball for that. Oh no. So I mean, I take extra. Yeah, the lunch is up here. So you each get a half a goat cheese ball today. I think we've got 30 on there, so just kidding. The rest are for me. <laughs> no, but in all honesty, let me know if you are uncomfortable, and I'd be more than happy to fix you a plate. Um, but usually people like to come and go as they want. Uh, we've got Italian subs over here with some pickles and grapes, dill pickles. These, the lighter one, is an artichoke, a creamy artichoke dip, spinach and artichoke dip, really good. And they're in little phyllo dough tart cups. The one that looks disgusting and terrifying is actually very good too. It is a wild mushroom tart. So there's, well, not necessarily like wild, but there's all these different kinds of mushrooms, um, garlic, olive oil, rosemary, onion. It's really good. Not a Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got chilled shrimp kebabs with remoulade sauce. We have sourdough baguettes with a smoked cream cheese and roasted red pepper and dill spread on top. Then we've got caprese salad kebabs. So the tomatoes, fresh mozzarella, basil, basil pesto, and then a balsamic reduction over the top. And then we've got some goat cheese balls. They've been making people sick, so I wouldn't recommend eating them. They're so good. Yeah, I know. I've actually eaten so many, I'm probably, I probably need a break for a bit. But they are goat cheese balls that are wrapped in walnuts, craisins, green onions, and then a basalmic reduction over the top. So now you know why I like them. They're delicious. Okay, last thing, and then I promise I'll shut up for probably like two seconds. Um, we have drinks, unlimited drinks, except for I only have a couple of Cokes left. I probably shouldn't have said that. You would have never even wanted one until I said it. Um, for the Alaskan beers, we have the Alaskan Amber, the Alaskan White, and the Icy Bay IPA. If you've never tried an Alaskan beer, you're more than welcome to. And if you don't like it, you're on the electric car, so you don't have to finish it or choke it down. We can just dump it, get rid of it, and get you something that you do like. We have Budweiser, Bud Light. I have regular bottled water, sparkling water, so Perrier is the kind that we have. And then I have Coke, Diet Coke, lots and lots of Diet Coke, Sprite, and orange juice. I do have Prosecco, so I can make a mimosa. For white wines, I have Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling, Rosé, and Chardonnay. And for red wines, I have Pinot Noir and a Cabernet Sauvignon. So, those are my drinks. Um, the way the drink service goes is I will come around and get your name and your drink order. Um, you're actually not allowed by the state of Alaska to come back here and get your own drink. I know a lot of people would like to do that, but no, no. Um, so you can't go back into my amazing bar back. Um, but I'll come around and I'll get, I'll get your name and your drink order. I ask that you just have one drink because that's all that fits in the drink holder, one drink at a time. You can switch it however many times you want, unless you want like a bottle of water, then that's okay. But one drink will, with the motion of the train, is good. Two is asking for an accident. Okay, and I'll stay on top of your drinks. If you want to refill, you want to switch it, let me know. Oh, and restroom. So behind my bar back is a door 
right back here. It'll be the nicest train restroom you probably ever use. Um, the toilet is a little different. It's a pump to flush toilet. So you have to pump the handle in the back of the toilet about five or six times. Each time you pump down, more water will flow through. So just, you know, pump it a couple of times really quick and the water will eventually start flushing. If there is a problem or it's not quite working right or something, then come get me and that's when I get to be the plumber. It's my favorite. Okay, well, I think that about does it for all of our announcements. And we'll get the party started. We're going to be moving here in just a moment. about the 
see on the right, and then I'll start pouring your drinks. On the right hand side, you'll see the Gold Rush Cemetery. You may have heard a couple of names of people in town, some of our quirky history, but essentially Frank Reed and Sophie Smith are the two main characters in this cemetery. So Frank Reed was the town hero. He is the large obelisk in the center of the cemetery. It says he gave his life for the honor of Skagway. Sophie Smith is up that brown railing. He was the villain. He was six, he was buried six feet outside of the cemetery boundaries, so he doesn't desecrate the good people of Skagway buried within its boundaries. That's how unliked he was. So essentially, long story short, gold was found. People came up here to try to get close to it. There was no law and order, like many frontier towns. Sophie Smith was a gangster and a really good conman that started a gang up here and performed scams on everyone. And they would know many times that they had been scammed till they were up the pass. Like sometimes he would get to know somebody and then come up to them, well not him, he would send one of his gang members to get to know someone. And then later he would come running up to him saying, hey, I just got a telegraph from your wife, so-and-so, and your daughter, so-and-so is sick. They need money. They said, if you just could send it, it could work out. And I've got these telegraph poles and I can wire money, blah, 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 with my buddy. Like, be this hero. And then they would get up the pass and they just been robbed, essentially. So those were some of his scams. Um, but like I said, long story short, they met on the wharf, tried to get rid of Sophie Smith, the shots were fired. After the smoke cleared, he lay dead on the ground, got shot in the heart, died instantly. The town rejoiced. But Frank Reed, the town hero, died in agonizing 12 days later from a rifle shot wound to the groin. Yeah. So we say uh, that's the day that poor Frank Reed officially lost his golden nuggets. But uh, what can you do, poor guy? So, anyways, uh, that's essentially it. You'll hear about them in town. Just know Sophie Smith was the villain, Frank Reed, that poor guy. And then there's still no odd order, so such is life. Okay, I'll start making your drinks. Um, yeah, you can, I, yeah, thank you, I always forget. You're more than welcome to come and fix a plate. The next two miles, we'll be booking it pretty, I mean, I mean, this is fast for us. We'll be booking it, the bumps and jolts will be a little bit more sudden. Um,
Everyone else will not be in the city. 